Hello and welcome. My name is Natalie Ariola, and today I will be talking about one of my favorite photographers, Jerry Yulesman. Yulesman has been a huge inspiration to me for both his rich, beautiful, and enigmatic images, as well as his no-nonsense approach to his work and understanding of the photographic medium. Working as a teacher for many years and having done countless interviews, he has been incredibly forthcoming in sharing his photographic process and his philosophies in regard to art and photography. Yulesman's work is often referred to as a precursor to the advent of Photoshop, his particular method of darkroom manipulation having foreshadowed this now ubiquitous digital photographic tool. But his work is to this day made completely in the physical darkroom. What we uncover in Yulesman's work is a world of spiritual inquiry and self-discovery, one that is not tied to the real in the straight sense, but rather to what lies beyond human perception and within the subconscious mind. Yulesman is not afraid to play and to understand the artistic process as an imperfect and constantly evolving one. He said this in regard to his method of photographic post-visualization over traditional pre-visualization. By post-visualization, I refer to the willingness on the part of the photographer to re-visualize the final image at any point in the entire photographic process. Let us not delude ourselves by the seemingly scientific nature of the darkroom ritual. It has been and always will be a form of alchemy. While I will not be using the physical darkroom that is Yulesman's artistic home, I will be shooting separate images and combining them in the digital darkroom of Photoshop in my attempt to reveal a bit of that alchemy Yulesman refers to. Are photographs better when planned and pre-visualized before pressing the shutter? Or can we capture a lost sense of mystery and imagination when we continue our experimentations well into the post-production phase of our photographic process? Let's find out in today's episode of Natalie Ariola is Murdering the Classics. Looking at Yulesman's work, one often feels transported to a place of dreams or to some spiritual realm. His images seem to dwell somewhere within the subconscious mind, yet they also feel connected to something real, universal, and enigmatic. His work seems to cross a barrier between the reality of the everyday and the great unknown. In this journey between worlds, we are exposed to a place where questions about the nature of existence and the human mind take shape and reveal themselves. Though we view these mysteries through Yulesman's eyes, he isn't trying to impose any views on his audience. He is merely presenting his unique visualization of the most fundamental of life's riddles. As I mentioned, Yulesman believes in the power of post-visualization in his imagery. This allows freedom of thought in his work and helps him to tap into the stream of consciousness. In my attempt at an Yulesman-style image, I will combine forethought in regard to the overall content and possible messaging of my image with freedom to play throughout each step of the process. Whether I'm shooting, reviewing images, or editing, experimenting, playing, and allowing possibilities I may not have planned for to reveal themselves will be essential to my image building process. I plan to shoot images of landscapes and natural objects, as well as go through my image archives in order to get started putting together the pieces of my photographic puzzle. In this way, my process will somewhat mirror Yulesman's, though I will use the digital darkroom rather than the physical one. So today we are outside in a park nearby where I live, and the idea here is just to collect some images that we can possibly use in our Yulesman style composite. So this is something that Jerry Yulesman actually did. He would go around and just keep collecting images for his archive so that he would have things that he could use during his post-visualization process to add to various compositions in the darkroom. I'm gonna photograph this oak tree behind me and just some of the general landscape around here and we will see what we can get. So let's go ahead and do that. And I am using a pretty high ISO because I'm out here in the evening as the sun has actually 
gone beneath the horizon because I want a nice even lighting on these. It's going to be a lot trickier for me to edit these in Photoshop uh, in, in a way that's going to look natural if I don't have a nice even lighting. So that's basically the idea here. So I'm just going to get some different shots of the oak tree here. I'm going to do my best to frame it against the sky in order to make it easier to cut out in Photoshop. But of course, there will be parts of it that I just cannot frame against the sky. So we will have to contend with that if we decide to use it later. And now I'm going to move down here. I actually think this will be a bit better for me because the sun is actually coming from sort of behind where I'm currently standing. So this side should give me a slightly brighter exposure. I'm trying to get as much of that tree in there as I possibly can. I'm not going to be able to get 100% of it, but yeah, that looks, that looks really cool. It's just a really neat tree we've got here. I think I'm actually going to come down here because I feel like this tree over here is also pretty interesting. So I'm just going to grab a couple shots of it. So it's a little backlit, so I'm going to have to be careful with my exposure here, make sure I get it right. But I, def I think this could just be a good background for an image even, because um, it's just a very interesting kind of area that we've got here. Maybe I'll get a landscape orientation shot as well. I want to kind of crop any leaves from this tree that I'm under out of my shot. So I'm just going to kind of set my focus. I'm pretty much at infinity focus anyways, so that's not something I need to worry about. Turn it to manual focus, and then I'm going to take a shot, sort of a lower frame, and then I'm going to go up and get a higher framing there so that I can potentially combine those in Photoshop and make that kind of like a background of an image or something along those lines. So I think we've already gotten quite a few interesting shots here and we probably have plenty of material to bring into Photoshop and begin composing our Yulesman style image. I have now uploaded my images from the park and I've actually gone through them and selected a few that I think may be interesting for use in our Yulesman style image. I've also gone through my image archives and selected some landscapes and oceanscapes that I think may also be helpful for our purposes. So we're just going to take a quick moment to go through these. So this is one of the images that I took at the park, and this is that uh, just huge fallen oak tree. And I just really like this shot. I think it has a nice shape, a nice composition, and it definitely could serve as something inspirational in our Yulesman image. Also, uh, Jerry Yulesman uses a lot of trees in his imagery, so this is definitely in line with his kind of work. Uh, this is again the same tree, just a slightly different angle, and here we can kind of see the uh, trunk where it has broken away from the ground, and I just think that's kind of an, uh, visually interesting, so I thought I'd include that one. Now, I've also selected some other images from my archives, so this is just a very, very minimalist oceanscape. Uh, I take shots like this a lot because I feel like it's always going to serve as a good background for some sort of image that I may be putting together later on. So this is one that I just feel it's just a perfect kind of uh, flat horizon. You've got the water and the sky is sort of split in the scene there. Now this is actually an image that I took in Death Valley and it's another panoramic image that I combined in Photoshop. And I happened to be there at a time when it, it had just rained. So there were clouds in the sky, which is very rare for Death Valley. It rarely rains there. You rarely get these kind of cloudy skies. So it was really sort of a stroke of luck. And I've always really wanted to use this image because I feel like 
this hill here in the sort of center of the image looks a lot like a human body uh, and head. So I, I feel like this is just really asking for a very Yule Swin style composition here. So right now, I feel like I'm definitely leaning towards using this image. I, I just, I feel like I already am starting to envision how I would put this together. So this is probably going to be the one that we are going to wind up using. I just wanted to go through these with you so that you could get a sense for how I'm compiling these images and allowing them to serve as post-visualization inspiration for my final composition. Let me take a moment to talk to you about the setup I'm going to be using for this image. So I'm doing a self-portrait. So I'm using my mannequin here to sort of stand in for me in order for me to get my lighting right and also my camera position and focus and all of those things. I have a table here that I'm going to be lying on for this shot. And I also have a light set up. I've got that on sort of the far side over here off to the side pretty far because I want a nice dramatic light here to match the image that we're going to be combining this with. So in the landscape image, there's a very dramatic lighting coming through. It's uh, later in the day, so the sun is low on the horizon and there's also a lot of clouds. So we're definitely getting a pretty heavy side lighting that's cutting through that image and illuminating the part of the hills in that image that I want my figure to take the place of. So I'm just trying to mimic that lighting as best I can. I've also put a couple of lights on my backdrop just to brighten up the background so it'll be easier for me to cut myself out of this image when I bring everything into Photoshop. So other than that, we're ready to go. I have my trigger on my camera, so this will make it so that I can take shots uh, automatically without needing to be behind the camera in order to operate it. And that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, you won't be able to join me for this one because I am going to be doing a nude shoot. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut here, take these shots, and then we will take a look at them together once we have everything ready to go. Now that I have the separate images which make up the pieces of my puzzle, I can begin the process of combining them in the digital darkroom. This will be quite a simple process, which should require a fairly basic selection process to remove my figure from its white background and place it into my landscape. I will then use a soft brush to mask my figure into the scene in a believable and visually interesting way. As far as Photoshop edits go, this should be a relatively easy one. I will complete my image by adding color and contrast adjustments. My final image is complete and I am extremely pleased with the results. I feel like this image reflects Yulesman's process while also taking on a life of its own that can only come from my personal creative expression. I have chosen to keep the color in my image both as a sign of the modern digital age and because this image just looks better in color. And that is part of what the post visualization process is all about opening yourself up to aesthetic and thematic possibilities and allowing them to take shape organically rather than forcing your vision into a specified or predetermined box. This image was both planned and not planned. It is the combination of thought and action working together in a sort of feedback loop. And isn't that really the essence of art? No matter how much planning we do, frequently our final product is not what we originally intended. Does this not suggest that Ulsman's method of post-visualization is the more natural, honest, and forgiving process of creating photographic art? I'll leave it up to you to decide. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss out on future episodes of Natalie Ariola is Murdering the Classics.